This guy began his business journey at 16, quickly learning how businesses work. An Indian origin teenager set up his real estate business between school lessons in London. How did he achieve this? Welcome to Insight Booth. Today I'm talking about the richest kid in the world. What money lessons can we learn from the young fella? Akshay Ruparelia was a student at Queen Elizabeth High School in Barnett, London. He completed his A-levels, scoring three A-pluses and two A's as he worked with clients during the lunch break. Nicknamed Alan Sugar after business tycoon Baron Sugar, his eureka moment came when he read a biography of Ryanair founder Michael O'Leary. Mr. O'Leary began selling flights for just $4.99, and his point was that if you deliver what you say you will, you hook people in and your business will work. Akshay applied that approach to his business idea and launched his online real estate business, Doorsteps. His offer was quite enthusiastic, selling houses for just $99. Soon after he launched his website, he met a client in Sussex who wanted to sell his home and an additional piece of land next to his house. I had to pay my sister's boyfriend $40 to drive me to take photographs of this man's house. I had not passed my driving test, and I did not have a car. It was a five-bed place with a swimming pool. I put the house at $485,000 and the land at $185,000. I sold it within three weeks. I was standing in the school playground and got an email on my mobile from the vendor saying he had accepted the combined $670,000 offer I had for him and that I was a legend, an absolute star. That was a sensational moment. I was just thrilled. I sold a house for $99, but I could not go out and celebrate. I had to go home and revise for my exams. I got a Domino's Pizza Inn as a treat. The small step paid well. As today, Alan has over 1,050 homes for sale on his website, selling around 30 a week. Akshay's firm employed 12 people a year after the launch and was valued at $12 million. The kid has also raised almost $400,000 with around 500 investors via Crowdcube, returning merely 3% of his business. He also applied a unique employment model where he hired self-employed mothers. They used to take photos for the website and show the properties to clients across the UK. While in school, Akshay Ruparelia set up his online estate agency, Doorsteps. In two years, he has sold $400 million worth of property. How did he do it? Here are the valuable tips for success I want you to learn from this kid. 1. Eat the frog. If it's your job to eat a frog, it's best to do it first thing in the morning. And if it's your job to eat two frogs, it's best to eat the biggest one first. Mark Twain. As bizarre as that sounds, it's got a good meaning. It means starting your day with the most challenging task you have. The rest of the day becomes a lot easier and smoother. This is how Alan managed his workflow. When he was in secondary education, Akshay completed his homework beforehand because time management is critical for all entrepreneurs. It's essential to plan and sort out your priorities so you can move on to the factors in business. 2. Learn from real life The first business venture Alan tried was selling sweets at school. He was saving up towards buying a PlayStation. He didn't want to depend on his parents as he wanted to buy it himself with his own money. Being self-sufficient at a young age made him more confident and more responsible. Many entrepreneurs learn from their real-life experiences. That's what made them strong and confident with what they do. So, when Akshay was around 11 years old, he was moving from house to house. He could also care for this while studying and setting up his business simultaneously. So, he got his hands-on experience from his housing experiences to his business. That made him realize where he wanted his company to go forward. I tried to understand the breakdown costs, and a big one was the state agency fees. What did he do differently from his competitors? He learned about key disruptors in different industries like Uber, taxi driving, and shopping with Amazon. So his approach was to try and connect with buyers and sellers directly. That's what he did with doorsteps. That's a distinctive approach. Come into a new niche and try something different from your competitors immediately. As an entrepreneur, you want an out-of-the-box and innovative approach to the business, especially when providing products and services for your consumers and clients. Take every experience you have and just take it on board. So things happening in your life, use that to your advantage. 3. Read biographies I've read biographies by Napoleon Hill, Alan Sugar, and Richard Branson. I can list all the biographies I've read by entrepreneurs. Akshay had read Michael O'Leary's biography on Ryanair's success story, giving him a million-dollar idea. He didn't just read the book and leave it on his bedside table. He applied it in practice straight away. What he found useful from Michael O'Leary's biography is that if you can charge very little for a service, people would be drawn to it. Akshay followed Michael O'Leary's principle. His business charged a small fee of $99 while delivering the best service. Reading a biography can be motivational, especially when you feel down about your business. They demonstrate that ordinary people built the masterminds behind successful companies. They decided to step out of their comfort zone and take a risk. Biographies can provide important tips, lessons, and inspirational quotes. All these combined can lead to life-changing results. 
Look at these biographies as your entrepreneurial handbooks for success. Read books, lots of books. It will change your life. Four, listen to your mom. Akshay stated, 95% of the time, your mom is right regarding advice and guidance. If your mom gives you a bit of advice, take it. Moms know more than you'll ever realize. That's why I'm employing an army of them across the country to work for. Turns out being a mommy boy will make you a billionaire. Jokes aside, our parents can indeed guide us with some suggestions in their opinions. Not your mom. Try to talk and listen to the other people in your life. Your dad, siblings, friends, and even your college professor. Whoever you approach for advice can help you by providing a second opinion, and even better, some of their expertise. Five, teach yourself. Unfortunately, sometimes your school teachers or parents won't teach you everything. Sometimes we have to learn and educate ourselves. Alan had to learn floor plans and photography from scratch, things he had no experience in. He saw a gap in the market. That's what gave him that advantage over his competitors. His competitors charged a $5,718 fee in contrast with his $99, which were charged just for the service statistics from Doorstep's website. Knowing your competition and a non-existent business idea can be to your advantage. Without teaching yourself, it's difficult to start a business. You need to understand every aspect, whether or not it is your forte. Six, risks can pay off. If you want to win big, you have to take significant risks. Alan made his first sale for a company at 16 when he couldn't drive. Take every opportunity that comes your way, even if it is something you don't necessarily know how to do. It's better to take the chance and learn from it rather than pass up something that could have changed your life. If your guts say setting up a business is a great idea, go for it. You'll never make a fortune if you don't take risks. Seven, manage your time. Don't waste time watching Stranger Things new season. Work hard, make money, and maybe someday you'll be rich enough to call Millie Bobby Brown for a date or Charlie Heaton, whoever kicks you in. Of course, don't work all the time. We all need to relax for a brain recharge. Work hard, work smart, and maybe, at the end of the day, you can check out one episode of Stranger Things, but only one. Eight, don't rely on luck. I believe in luck, but don't consciously give it any attention. I will never allow people around me to rely on luck, especially in the working environment. Everything happens as a result of conscious action. It's just that luck may change the extent of the impact. By relying upon or consciously allowing luck to occupy your mind space, you're relieving or removing control from your remit. Intrinsically, I'm a control freak, so I don't like that. Alan was lucky enough to become the youngest millionaire in the world. Of course, there were thousands of enthusiastic genius kids, but Alan overcame them. He was lucky, but he never relied on luck. The deep focus on service led his company to now being one of the highest rated estate agency sites. Late nights and early morning work enabled him to start the company himself, so it's never about luck only. But what do you think about Alan and his story? Share your opinion in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss an upload, and you can enjoy the excellent content we send your way.